Hello? Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? It's good to see everybody, and this place is slowly starting to fill up. It's so amazing. This is our second week of the Lost and Found series, and we're just we're happy to see this place kind of come back to normal slowly over time. Uh, we want to say we want to welcome you this morning. We want to welcome all our online viewers. I encourage you to keep sharing our Wednesday night when, when Mitch and Miss Robin goes live, just to keep sharing that. That's a great way for people to stay plugged in. Um, one big announcement, this, this Thursday night, we're going to have a Zoom meeting with our youth. So if, if you're interested in doing that, please come find me after service. We can get you plugged in. We're going to do that Thursday night at 7 p.m. Uh, in this worship band, aren't they doing great? Isn't it an awesome day to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Yes. We are so blessed, so blessed. It's good to see Chris. We went to high school together. It's great. good to see him. Uh, I'm going to pray, if you'll pray with me this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for bringing every, each and every person here this morning. Uh, as, we, as we sit in here and we worship you and praise you, let us just focus on you and anything outside of these doors. Let them stay out there, God. Uh, as, you, as Mitch speaks about being lost and found, God, remember when we were in a place where we were lost and found. God, we love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Good to see you this morning. I'm Mitch. I'm the uh, senior minister here at uh, Christian Valley. I want to welcome you. If you're watching online, we want to welcome you and hope that uh, uh, everything is going well with technology today. Um, we have a, a new uh, system in here that we've installed, and, um, and, and we got Internet hooked up, and we just think it's okay um, to, to just keep showing this online right now for, uh, for those of you who can't come and be with us. Uh, this morning, we're going to uh, partake of communion. We do this each week at Christian Valley. And I uh, just want you to know that, um, that this is open for all believers, all those who have uh, uh, been baptized into Christ. And, and it, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be a part of our church if you're visiting with us. We just want you to, to participate in the Lord's Supper. Uh, because the Lord's Supper really is, is a time of fellowship. And I think fellowship is big. It's something that we yearn for in our life. We, um, uh, we want to be around other people. And I know some of you may say, oh, I'd rather just be by myself, and you're an introvert, and, and you might enjoy being away from people. But I'm telling you, this, this quarantine time has taught us that we kind of want to be together sometimes. Kids are wanting to go back to school. That was unheard of in my day. Huh? Kids want, they're looking forward to going back to school. And I hope that as you come back into church that it makes you feel good to know that worship online is, is better than nothing. But it's, it's got something really missing, and that is fellowship. In the, the Scripture, the book of Acts, when it talks about the earliest church, it says that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and prayer. And I think all those are important. We need to be taught. And we, be taught, we can be taught remotely. And we need to uh, come around the Lord's table and, and, and get closer to God and thank Him for His Son, Jesus. We need to pray, and we can pray anywhere. But there's something about fellowship that just makes the church the church. And we're the church, okay? We are the bride of Christ. And so this morning, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad that we get to talk and, 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 and catch up on each other uh, what's going on in our, our lives and be part of each other's lives and the fellowship that goes along with being here in the name of Jesus. We're going we're gonna, to uh, pray and then there's tables on each corner of our sanctuary. There's one in the back to, uh, of, the, of the auditorium here today. If you're at home, I hope you've prepared to, to remember Jesus at this time. We come around this table to remember the bo broken body and the shed blood of Jesus, the one who died for our sins on the cross. And he said, I want you to come together, fellowship together, and I want you to remember me when you do it. God, we love you. We can never repay you for your great gift, the gift that your son gave us, and, and the fact that he uh, was willing to die for our sins. And so this morning, we want to remember you. We want to remember your son, Jesus, and we do that as we come around this table together. It's a time, God, of prayer. It's a time of, of breaking bread. It's a time of teaching because we're, we're learning as we do this, and it's a time of fellowship. We thank you because we're blessed. In the name of Jesus, we lift up all these things. Amen.
morning again. We are excited to have you here today. We're excited to be part of a, 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 a sermon series that um, um, I, I really like. It's called Lost and Found. It's, um, it's basically uh, uh, just um, uh, talking about one of our main goals in the scripture. Um, and, and you know what? I got ahead of myself here. Kids can head to the back if you'd like to this morning. Um, Y'all can head back there. Um, I, I'm ahead of myself. I, I, I get that way sometimes. Lost and Found is a, a sermon series that I think deals with, with, with number one. What's number one with us as a Christian? We can't be happy with where we are. We need to bring people with us. We need to know that this is good and this is fun and this is the way it's supposed to be. And so um, we, we really just need to take this sermon series, I believe, to heart. Last week we talked about the lost sheep. And I know that our online didn't work for us. And uh, about it, the music part worked really good. And then about five minutes into my sermon it quit. And I'm thinking... Uh, was it really that bad? Okay, you know, I don't know. But no, it was, it was about lost sheep. And, and so uh, Luke chapter 15 talks about lost sheep, lost coin, lost son. And so um, go back and read um, Luke 15 for us. And, and just um, uh, we want you to, to really immerse into that story about lost sheep because we are the sheep, Okay. We are the, the one that, that's out there in the pasture in the weeds somewhere, and we were left the 99. We're out kind of rogue on our own, and Jesus is looking for us, okay? And that's our job as a church is to go looking. And so this morning, we're going to kind of move along. We're going to talk about a lost coin this morning. You know, um, over the years, I've had a lost and found box. I just keep it in my office, and uh, a lot of times I, after the, the church is clean, our, our cleaning crew is doing an awesome job. Uh, they're they're disinfecting everything, all the handles, all the pews. They're doing it. And they're really working hard to keep this place clean. But you know, over the years, they have found a lot of things. They put them out there on the counter. I just take them, put them in, a, in my lost and found box. And over the years, this was before I either needed glasses or wore contacts. You wouldn't believe how many pairs of reading glasses have been in our lost and found over the years. Okay, I mean there are a lot of them. Um, keys. I can't. I, I would think somebody's gonna want these keys. Take a picture, put it on our church Facebook. Lost keys. Nobody. I've been out in the parking lot. You know, try to. I got a, a car out here somewhere. Um. Rings. Earring. One. You not. not I start to say earrings, but it's always just one. I don't know. You just lose one earring. Uh, we've had everything. Ink pens. I. They all end up in the lost and found back here. Never had money in the lost and found. Uh, yeah, what about that? I don't know. Uh, there's never money found and turned turned in. Phones and money, ne never. Today we're going to read a story about some lost money, and and I think one of the reasons that there's never money in our lost and found is because that's something that's really dear to us. Okay, we know where our money is. We work hard for our money, and we want to know where it is. And so today. We're going to look at this story, and we're going to see that, uh, that this woman has lost her coin, okay? And, and, and she gets really upset about it. There's an urgency there, and she's going to be looking for this coin. So let's, um, let's go ahead, and, and we're going to look at this. Um, as we talked last week, Jesus was talking to tax collectors and sinners, all right? And these tax collectors, they were like uh, nobody liked them. They were the worst of the worst. They, nobody liked tax collectors. They were robbing the people. And so it says Jesus was talking to tax collectors. And this is one of those deals. You've probably always been there. If you walked into the, the, the convenience store back in the first century and there was a tax collector in there, you're just going to kind of turn your shoulder a little bit, right? You're not gonna, you don't want to really have to engage this guy. And it says that he was also talking to sinners. And, uh, and while we're all sinners, we've got to believe that he was talking about the worst of the worst, okay? This was the, uh, the thieves, the murderers, the prostitutes, all the things that nobody wanted to be around. Jesus wanted to be there. And it really upset the religious leaders of the day. It really upset the, the Pharisees and the, and the teachers of the law. And so they came to Jesus and said, hold it just a second. We need to chat here, teacher. 
because you're talking to people we don't talk to. What's up? And it's so Jesus launched into these three parables, three stories, okay? And, uh, and, 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 the, and, and the first one was about the lost sheep. He said they're going to leave the 99 good, solid, obeying, rule-following sheep over here. And he's going to go out in the middle of nowhere tromping around looking for his one. And that's our job. And so we are the lost sheep. We're the ones out there in the weeds. Jesus is looking for us. Jesus is dispatching people to look for us. And so we've got to really be on purpose here of knowing, uh, recognizing lost sheep and going out and looking for them. Now, um, when something's lost, we look for it. That's, that's our nature. And last week we focused on the lost. Today we're going to focus a little bit more on the search, okay? The sheep that wandered away was lost in the middle of nowhere. The coin that we read about today was lost, but it was inside the house, okay? There's a, people read these, these parables and they kind of put them all together, but there are some subtle differences in these two parables that we talked to the one last week and the one today. There are some differences, and one of them is the fact that this coin was lost, but it was lost inside the house. And so our one thing today, one thing I want to really put here in your head, and one thing I want you to remember is this. Before we can go out and find lost people, we need to make sure we're not lost ourselves, okay? We may be in God's house, but we don't, it doesn't necessarily mean we're not a little bit lost. Let's focus on that today. First thing is this. Finding something that, that is lost requires action, okay? When finding something that is lost requires action. Now, this is a parable. Jesus, uh, he, this is a hypothetical situation. Jesus made this story up, and he did this a lot to drive home points. I love that about Jesus' teaching. He brings it in where people can understand it. He talks about things they know about, and he uses these points to, to or uses these stories to prove his point. They're based on real life, and so here he, he says in, in Luke chapter 15, starting in verse 8, what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? Okay, so he assumes that's what we're going to do. woman loses a coin. He says she's not just going to say, oh, man, lost my coin. It says she is going to work and work and work. She's going to hunt and search, and she's going to try to find this coin. And so, to, to help us understand what's going on here, we need to, to, to understand a little bit of first century culture, okay? Uh, first of all, um, uh, we, we have to assume that this woman is married. And, and let me tell you why. Because in the same way today, we wear a wedding ring. In the first century, if a woman married a man who had a little bit, you know, if you married, if, obviously if you married somebody who couldn't afford it, you just kind of... Or on your own, but if you married a man who had the resources, he didn't give you a wedding ring, he gave you a wedding headband, and in that headband it had ten coins, okay? Ten silver coins. That and, and the woman, if she went out in public, would wear this silver, this 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 headband with ten silver coins. And so maybe the parallel there is, okay, she lost one of the coins out of her wedding headband. Now, ladies, I'm just gonna ask you, would that be a big deal? Huh? Okay, I'm just asking, okay, w w would you like it if your husband came home and, and, and looked at your headband and, and, and said, you got a coin missing? And you said, oh, well, I, yeah, I saw it, but I really didn't care. You know, I, uh, it's no big deal, don't worry about it, nine's as good as ten. No, you would look everywhere for that coin. It says she did, she swept, she, she got on the floor, she's looking all over the place because she has lost a coin that meant a lot to her. Coin would probably be a drachma, a drachma, and, and we really don't know because the Bible is kind of funny this way. It always says when it describes a drachma, uh, it, it describes it as a day's wage, and that's hard for us to understand because some people make a lot more than others, right? A day's wage for, for one might be not be the same as a day's wage another and and some 
Modern translators have said, oh, it's about a, uh, stands for about $100 uh, modern money. We don't know. I don't know. I, I can't get, really get into that. What I know is it was worth enough for her to search for it. And she lost it, and she wanted it back. And, um, and here she was in her house looking for this coin. Now, let's go ahead and stop there, too. Because in our house, if we drop a coin, it's going to hit hardwood, and bounce and roll, right? It's going to make a noise, bing. Or it's going to hit tile, and it's going to hit, and it's going to go somewhere. And you may have to look under the fridge, under the counter, under, you know, under the couch. Or it's maybe going to hit carpet, and it's just going to make a little ump right there when it hits carpet, but it may not just fall right there. Not so for this woman. You see, her coin was going to fall and hit dirt. Okay? Or possibly, if she was really wealthy, it might fall and hit a rock because they would lay flat rocks for floor in their house. But you know what they use kind of as the grout in the middle? Dirt. Okay? So, so this is going to be hard for her because not only is she looking under the furniture and hoping that maybe the dog didn't get her coin and take off with it, she has got to worry that it may have gotten in the dust and the dirt in her house and it's, got, it's gotten covered up. And so... She's got a mess here. Husband's going to be home. One of my coins is missing. It's worth a lot of money. And I can't find it anywhere. There was an urgency going on to try to find this coin. Let's just see this. Let's just say, uh, say just set here. We see that she has panic, okay? Anxiety everywhere. Tension. She don't know what to do. She's probably, do you think she's crying? Oh my God, my baby. And she's crying, and she can't, can't find the coin because her eyes are all watered up. This is a bad, bad day. What do you see? If, uh, modern day question here. What do you see if you see a coin on the floor? Do you pick it up? I, you know, I'm just asking, and, and I'll just kind of survey here. If you saw a silver dollar on the floor, would you pick it up? Well, yeah, yeah everybody's going to pick up Half dollar, sure, those are rare. We don't see half dollars very much. If you see a quarter on the floor, is that worth your time? Yeah, your name, pick up quarters. Nobody's, uh, yeah, okay, I'm getting a few, yeah. Dime, mm, nickel, eh. I'm just going to tell you, I am a self-professed penny picker-upper, okay? I probably picked up three pennies this week. I am never going to retire rich off picking up pennies, but there is just something about a coin that I can't walk past. And other people say, oh, don't pick it up unless you see it's heads up, right, because you're going to have bad luck. Look, it's 2020. I don't think a coin is going to change my luck, all right? I'm picking it up anyway. I put it in a big jug at home. The reason we have a coin shortage is because I've got a half-gallon jug full of coins in my closet right now that I refuse to go get cashed in until they offer me more money for it than it's worth. I'm holding out, okay? You want my coins, you tell me what, 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 it, what we, kind of deal we can make here. I pick up coins. I don't know why. I bend over. I pick them up. You know the funny thing about a lost coin? It's worth just as much when you find it as it was when it was lost. Yeah, if somebody drops a coin and it hits the ground, it doesn't make it worthless. If you move your couch, if you, I love to every now and then just to take the couch cushion up. Huh? If you want to see lost and found, man, when I was a teenager, I would buy and sell old cars. I loved to buy an old car and uh, either I'd sometimes just make a hot rod out of it or, or maybe turn around and try to sell it for a little bit. The most fun that a teenager that lived in the middle of nowhere could have was taking the back seat out of a car I it, you talk about lost and found man and I, what I would do is I would um, take whatever I paid for the car and then I would subtract the money I found okay or if I found like tools or fly anything I found in there that was worth something I said okay I didn't give it I didn't actually give a hundred dollars for this car I only gave ninety three dollars and sixty seven cents for this car because I found money under the seat when money's lost, it doesn't lose its value. It's just not doing anything. It's just sitting there. I'm going to tell you something. 
The heart of Jesus is for the lost. I got a feeling Jesus would stop and pick up a coin because Jesus loves lost things. Jesus, he yearned to find lost things. And, and he said, do all you can do. In this parable, what he said was, spare no expense. Don't worry if your knees or your back are hurting from crawling around on the floor looking. Don't worry if your hands are sore from sweeping the floor looking. Turn over tables. Use your talent. Use your time. Move the couch. Sweep the floor. Light a lamp. Do whatever you've got to do to find the lost. Because Jesus said in Luke 19, 10, for the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. That was his number one. In church, that's got to be our number one, too. So finding something that, that's lost requires action. Finding something that's lost, though, is worth the celebration. Let's read on here in just a second. Um, it says, uh, uh, verse 9, says, And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and her neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I have lost. Now, remember last week, Shepherd found the little lost sheep, put it up on his shoulders, took it back, said, Hey, everybody, let's have a party, okay? Today, she says, I found my coin. Uh, I got to call somebody. We got, I got to have a party. We got to celebrate what was lost is now found. We know what search parties are. Somebody gets lost, we have a search party, right? Um, and, and usually, a lot of times, these end in tragedy. Maybe somebody got lost in the river, they have a search party, they go find them, and, and sometimes they, they turn up and it's, just, it's not a party, okay? And, and if a, a child gets lost, we send out the, the, everybody to find somebody that's lost. Lost puppies, lost uh, everything that we find that we lose, we'll find a search party and we go out and find it. And so what happens is when we find what we're looking for, this search party turns into just party. The Bible tells us that's okay. It's okay to have a party. We, uh, when, we, when we bring back what was lost, it's party time. It tells us here, she said, hold it. I've got to call somebody. I want to have a party. We're going to celebrate. Now Mark Moore says, a uh, teacher formerly at Ozark Christian College, uh, he writes, that uh, friends and neighbors here in the original language was written in the fr uh, feminine form. In other words, she called her, um, her sewing group or her book club or the ladies group from church, right? She called friends and neighbors, but they were probably all her female friends and neighbors. Hey, y'all come over and have a party, but don't tell your husband because I don't want my husband to know I lost the coin out of my headband, okay? But y'all come over. We're going to have fun. We'll have fun this afternoon because I found my lost coin. Last week, the shepherds were the focal point of this story of the lost sheep. And I'm just going to tell you, when it came to, to first century professions, shepherd was at the bottom. All right, nobody liked shepherds. They stayed out in the middle of nowhere for weeks and months, and they stunk, and they would come into town, and everybody said, ooh, we shepherds are in town. Let's leave. And Jesus taught this story about shepherds. Today he teaches about women, and I, I know this is this old and antiquated, and it's not this way anymore. We love you guys, ladies. We're glad you're here. You're part of our church, and, um, and, 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 and seriously, we love you, but in the first century, women were walking a step behind, and they kept quiet. And for Jesus to tell this story about women right after he told one about shepherds just really punched these Pharisees and teachers of the law in the gut. They said, what do you mean? We came and asked you why you're eating uh, with tax collectors and sinners, and now you start telling us stories about shepherds and women. What's going on, Jesus? But the story wasn't about women, it was about money. And I've said this before when we talk about money. The, uh, money is, is neither good nor bad. Money's not good, it's not evil. What we decide to do with our money makes it good or evil. The same coin that can be used to feed a family can be used to tear a family apart. That's up to us. The coin is not bad. In the same way uh, that a lost 
coin is not good or bad, it's just lost. And when it's lost, it doesn't have any value, but, you know, a, a lost coin is, is not worthless. It's just not worth anything at the time. It's the same with us. And I'm just going to tell you, if you've ever had a season in your life where you were lost, you weren't worthless. And if you're going through a season right now in your life where you just feel like you are lost, I just want you to know that you're worth just as much now as you ever were. You just need to get back in the hands of Jesus. Your value's not gone. And you need to know that the, that the good shepherd, the one who, uh, who, who loves lost sheep, that the, the, the master of the house, the one who uh, will do anything to find a lost coin is still looking for you and knows you and loves you and wants you to be found. And church, that's our job, is to go out and find those who are lost and bring them back in because when we do that and we're successful at that, we get to have the greatest party ever in the history of the world. You know, a few years ago, I lost a wedding ring, and um, I've had two or three since we've been married. Actually, I think this may be the fourth one, but we've been married a good long while. And, um, and, and I had one that, that was, um, I liked it, and I lost it. And I'm just going to tell you, it upset me. I didn't, I didn't always want to wear it um, when I was doing some things, but I wanted to know I had it because it was very special to me. My wife bought it for me. And so I started looking for more, where did I lose my wedding ring? And I actually gave my truck the best detailed job ever because you know, I was looking for my wedding ring. And those things can hide anywhere. And I searched our house, and I looked, and I would look, and I would say, okay, well, I can't find it. And then I'd catch myself a day or two later still looking. And I would look in places I'd already looked. I don't know if I thought it was just going to jump out and say, ha, 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 you already looked here, and now you're, you're, we're going to act like you didn't. And I don't know. I would look places, and I would think, I've already looked here twice. I even got to where I was. I, I, I remember I had gone and refereed a basketball game at, at a school, and I thought, hold it. I remember having it, and then I don't remember having it. And so I called the coach. I said, could you go in the dressing room and look for a wedding ring? You know, I, yeah, he did. He called me back. He's like, no, nothing here. And I finally just gave up on it. And you know what? If you really love something and you, you give up on it, you don't really give up on it. Because I would catch myself occasionally still looking. And I'd say, no, I've already given up on that. I've already got another one. I don't even need that one anymore. And I would still look for it because when you love something, you never give up on it. I was talking earlier about my jug of coins. I do that every year. And this was in the wintertime. I lost that wedding ring late summer. I always go cash in my half gallon of coins. And so I did that year. I went in there. I put my coins up on the counter, and they took them to the back. And a lady comes out and said, are you missing a wedding ring? It had been in my pocket. And when I took my change out of my pocket and put it in that jug, I put a wedding ring in there with it. And I was so happy. <laughs> she says, what are you smiling about? And I said, I, I lost my sermon. That was, a, that was a graceful landing, wasn't it? Uh, I said, I'll tell you what. When you lose something that means a lot to you and you find it, it's worth just as much now as it ever was. And I think maybe it was worth even more because it had been lost and now it's found. And... Um, and that, that should help us to know that that's our job as a Christian, to go out here and, and look for lost things. Don't worry if you feel lost right now that you're going to be forgotten, that you're not going to be loved, that you're not going to be wanted. Don't worry if you're lost today, if you feel like a, a coin under a couch this morning. Uh, don't worry that nobody's looking for you. Just raise your hand and say, hey, I'm lost over here and I need some help and somebody's going to come to your rescue, I promise. And we're going to party when that happens. Last thing, Jesus cares more about lost people than he does about lost things. Let's just go ahead and say that. He loves lost sheep. He loves lost coins. But you know what Jesus really loves? He loves lost people. 
Yeah, I, I mean, uh, just think about this. What about you? I, I mean, uh, you, you love coins, maybe. You, love, you, love, you like your animals. But I'm going to tell you, if a family member, if, if one of your, your friends or your family get lost, what's going to happen here? You're going to go find them. You're going you're gonna to bear no expense. You're gonna, you, it's it's going to be on. You're going to have a search party out there. The Pharisees here were in the house but they were lost, all right? Jesus was talking to them. He said, hey, Mr. Pharisee, Mr. Teacher of the Law, you guys are in the house, but y'all, are, y'all don't know what's going on. You are lost. You're, you rolled under the couch cushion. Let's see what Scripture says about it. Verse 10 says, just so I tell you, there is is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Yeah, last week it said there's, there's more rejoicing over the one who needs to be found than over the 99 that were already there. And we can take that personally. We can say, hey, yeah, you know, but it's still good to be part of the 99. It is where Jesus wants us to be. He wants us to be found. He wants us as a coin to be useful. But I'm going to tell you something. The scripture says over and over and over again that Jesus is looking for lost people. And that's why he was sent to this earth. And that's why he died on a cross so that when we're lost, we can be found. He cares about people. Jesus has a heart for lost people. And we've got to have a heart for the lost people because we're the church. If you think this woman um, threw a a party here because she found her lost coin, that's going to be nothing compared to the party in heaven that goes on when one sinner repents. We like parties. We love a a birthday party. We we love to, uh, yeah, I listen every now and then. I, I mostly listen to Christian music, but every now and then, especially if I'm working around the house, I like to turn on this classic country, huh? Comes from way back, you know. It's it's real music. And you know, the other day I was thinking about this because I was I worked on this sermon all week, and and um and I was listening to an old song, old station on the radio, and I got to listening, and a lot of those co- old country songs talk about parties. You know, they're looking for the weekend, they're looking for five o'clock, they're looking for any reason to have a party. Back in my day, I remember when we were going to party like it's 1999. I don't even know what that means, you know? Huh? Younger kids are like, what? I don't know. Google it. it. YouTube it. Maybe they got a video that tells you a little bit about it because I don't know why we were partying in 1999. But we love to celebrate. We do. We love to celebrate. And we have a job to do as a follower of Jesus. We're supposed to work. We're supposed to roll up our sleeves and go to work. We're supposed to light a lamp. We're supposed to sleep, you know, light a lamp. huh? It tell, I hadn't really talked about that, but the Bible tells us here, uh, if you're looking, you're going to search, you're going to sweep, you're going you're gonna to move things. And it says you're going to light a lamp. And that really brings things home to me because we... Um, uh, I don't mind. I've told you before. I'll say this uh, World Wide Web right now. I don't like the dark. And as a child, I was afraid of the dark. I didn't like it. And I remember, uh, you know, one of the, the the best investments you can make. And we've had boys, and we've had we got grandchildren now that stay at our house. You can you can buy this this little thing that plugs in the wall. It's got a little cover over it. Maybe a superhero or or just a little cover over it. And, and I think the bulbs in those things are probably about like a, a half a watt. You know, I don't know. There's a dimmest light you can ever buy. You plug it in the wall, and it can be so dark in a room, you plug that thing in, and all of a sudden, everything goes away. All the bad, all the, the, the boogeyman that's under your bed, they go away when you put a little night light in. That's, uh, it's, it's not enough light for, to even see how to get out of the room. But it gives us security because light drives out darkness. And it doesn't matter how dark something is, a little bit of light is going to make dark go away. And Jesus is the light. Okay? So if you're lost this morning, I want you to know that the light is on. 
and we're waiting for you. Sweep the floor. Don't worry about getting dirty, okay? You might get dirty when you're sweeping the floor, but you know what? Our, our goal is to find something that's lost. Search carefully. Get down on your hands and knees. Don't worry about being sore tomorrow. It gives you a story to tell. Celebrate, huh? When you find somebody that's lost and you redirect them back to Jesus, throw a party. Do the happy dance. Y'all don't want me to do the happy dance. I'm just telling you, huh? Not doing that. And don't worry that heaven got just a little bit more crowded. Rejoice and have a party. So what's the takeaway for today? Um, I got three, actually, takeaways for today. Usually we just leave you one. This is going to be harder to remember, but, uh, but here's our takeaways. This coin was lost inside, not outside. Okay? And that's important for us to know. Just because you come inside the house doesn't mean that you're right with God. doesn't mean you're found, okay? You may feel lost. You may be in this building this morning. You may feel lost. You may be watching online. And you say, well, I'm resonating with this story because I'm just not feeling it today. I feel like I'm, I'm a coin and I, I hit the ground and I rolled somewhere and I don't know what's going on. I feel worthless. No, you're just lost. And we're looking for you. And you don't have to be out in the weeds to be lost. You can be in the building and be lost. Second thing, the coin didn't know it was lost, okay? Huh? If you would have found this coin and said, Hey, Mr. Coin, why didn't you tell me you were lost? The coin don't have a clue, all right? And, and I'm just going to tell you, I think there's a lot of people out here walking around today that doesn't know that they're not walking in step with Jesus. And that's our job is to inform them and tell them to do it in the right way. Don't walk up to somebody and say, Hey, you're lost. Huh? I can tell by looking. <laughs> you, you need to work on this. They're probably not going to take that the right way. But when you talk to somebody and you start getting this weird feeling like, hold it just a second, I'm not, the vibes here aren't very good, you might just want to go ahead and say, hey, um, are you okay? Do you need help? Do you need, we need, we'll talk, can we talk about Jesus? Because I'm going to tell you, if you tell somebody and you sincerely say, hey, you know, I wasn't feeling good at some point in my life. I was seriously down. and You know, I just prayed and I talked to Jesus and I read through the scripture and I realized that I was off track a little bit. Man, he's going to find it. The last thing is this. This coin was lost, but it never lost its worth. And I don't care where you are. And I don't care where you've been. You are worth as much right now in the eyes of Jesus loves you, and he's searching for you, never, ever going to give up on you. So this morning, I want to ask you, where are you? Are you good? Are you okay? Are you kind of okay? Are you not really failing? Are you saying, I am so lost, I don't think I'll ever make it back? You're somewhere in that. So this morning, with us, if you want to make a decision that's going to change your life forever, if you just want to say, hey, uh, I've been there, I've done that, you can get over it, just like I did, we'll love you, watching online, you know the drill, we don't want you to be lost to us today, another minute, another hour, we want you to contact us, I hear from people who say, hey, something you said to me, I get messages, and they say something said the sermon I want to talk about, and that's good. We're, we're distancing you the best we can. But that doesn't mean we have to be lost. Stand with me this morning. The music team's going to play a song, and as they do, it's your chance to say, I need out of this place where I am.
your arms are wide. I am weary, but I know your touch restores my life. Wait for you. So I wait for you. I'm falling on my knees. Falling on me. Jesus, your oldest heart is in me. guys i appreciate y'all thanks for coming out this morning they come out early they practice and um they just set our tone for worship hey um we had a prayer time here before we started this morning remember all those we mentioned as well as um the, the ones you know in our, our community and your circle that need our prayers uh remember them hey brandon's going to be having a zoom meeting with our teenagers on thursday night seven o'clock so uh he'll be sending out an invite to, to for that but if you uh, don't get invited. Be sure and contact us because we want you to be a part of that. Brandon's working really hard, doing an awesome job, and we're excited about what he is doing here uh, at Christian Valley. We're excited to have you here too. I mean that. Um, go out in the world and find lost sheep, find lost coins, and find anybody that's lost, okay? Hey, uh, speak to me on the way out. We're, uh, we want to uh, just just catch up with you and connect with you the best way we can. We'll be on live on Wednesday night at 6.30 uh, somewhere on our property. My wife and I will be out there, and uh, we'll find the hottest place we can, I promise, and, um, and, 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 and give away uh, pizza. We've been doing that each week, $20 gift card for lost pizza. If uh, last week we didn't have very many shares, we didn't have any news, and I was excited because um, we did our our feed just didn't work right. So this week, if it's good, I want you to share this. We'll put your name in a drawing, a uh, $20 lost pizza gift card. Hey, that's hard to beat. And um, we appreciate them for all they do for us as well. I'm going to ask Jerry Don Clark, if he would, to uh, dismiss us with prayer. Y'all have a great, great week. Have a great week.